Yes, I love wine, but I love the right club. So I'm in charge of um, sponsorships and finding speakers and things for the right club. So I'm not often the guest speaker, but tonight I am. And uh, the right club is awesome. It's a free, free resource like Mogul, what you guys are doing. There's all kinds of free resources and you guys have been on as well, which is great. Uh, I just wanted to show the, uh, the knowledge cache. So if you go here on our website, therightclub.com, and you go to watch, you're going to see someone that you know, uh, name here. So James has been on before, and it's amazing. So if you want to learn about investing out of province, anywhere, so we're talking about BC, uh, they put a uh, typo in my name, but that's okay. I guess it's the wine. So I was speaking about investing out of province. You can invest in Winnipeg, do birth strategies, federal budgets. Anyway, there's so much there. And it's all free and yeah, we have nothing to sell. It's part of the community and that's how I grew and scaled and, and learned about all these markets. And that's how I learned about Alberta as well. Uh, I've actually, I had never been to Alberta before I bought my first property. So it's a gorgeous province and I'm going to switch to uh, my slideshow and oops, sorry, I'm not sharing it with you, but <laughs> um, there you go. Anyway, you got to see my French computer. So Alberta, it's a gorgeous province. And I, yeah, I can't believe I'd never been. All my investments were in Ontario. And then I went to New Brunswick. New Brunswick is amazing. And then I went down south to the US. Uh, so Detroit, I heard some stories about Detroit. It's a great city. Florida as well is amazing. Uh, and then why not Alberta? So I have the nice cheesy little changes. But anyway, I'm a real estate investor at the right club. And like uh, Rebecca said as well, wine and real estate. I now have properties in three Canadian provinces, two US states and Costa Rica. So it's quite fun. And uh, you can cash flow. And my wife and I do everything together, including posing and covered bridge chips. So it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and we love long distance investing. So many people enjoy traveling. I like discovering new places and new opportunities. And like I said, I already own in different places. When I enter a market, and I think that's a key thing as well, is I like to buy at least three properties in that same market. At least three, like you can go way more. Uh, but I find it's, it's good because you have more buying power. And again, your power team, you get to work with them and get to know them. So it's not good to be too scattered and have like one property here, one there. It's better to have nodes of uh, properties in different places. So yeah, and my wife puts up with all my crazy, crazy ideas. So it's important to have a good support team. Uh, so why Alberta? For me, uh, I could pick anywhere. I mean, there's all kinds of choices. Some of these are older stats and I'm sure you guys have way better stats than I do. But anyway, it just looked really good crazy appreciation but more sustainable like 9.9 percent .9%, that was january i'm sure now it's it's probably gone up or maybe stabilized uh compared to ontario we're, where we were at 25 percent like sometimes month over month it's not sustainable and things for me as an ontarian like some detached houses for five hundred thousand. that's the price of a garage or a parking space in many cities uh, semi-detached. So there's so much uh, to look out for. It's just a great, great place. So I actually strayed from Edmonton. I went to beautiful Mundare. So it's the sausage capital of Alberta, I heard. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sounds like fun, but um, great little market. There's some sweet little properties for under 400000 for four units. So less than $100,000 per door, which is just insane. Um, and anyway, great, uh, great vintage as well. As you know, I like wine. So these beauties were built in 1979. I was born in 1980. So I'm a bit younger than the place, but I think it's fun. And all units were well maintained. Sorry for the snow. Those are the pictures I had um, to show. I know we don't want to see that for quite a few months. Uh, but anyway, so great units. I got eight units for $640,000, which seems that's the price of a distressed townhouse, maybe in, in Ottawa, it really depends. So now you have eight units. So even if there are some that are vacant, 
it can still cash flow quite well and everything was well maintained. So to me, it's, it's a no brainer. And I would like to add, like Corey was saying earlier, it's important to have a good team on the ground and a good local team as well. So I am learning about that and I've already done it in several areas of Ontario, like I said, in New Brunswick and other countries as well. So just uh, some quick numbers. So 620 for the purchase, repairs, 40,000. So there's not much repairing to be done. And after repair value, 800,000. Uh, this property, how I got it so cheap, it was a probate uh, issue. So the owner passed away and did not have a proper will. So the property kind of sat in limbo for two years and people were not able to buy it and it just became problematic. So I was able to scoop it up and I did a joint venture uh, agreement. So we were speaking about joint ventures uh, with some of your guests earlier and uh, my joint venture partner came in with the money and the credit and I found the team. So I'm actually not boots on the ground. Oftentimes uh, I just identify markets and opportunities for partners that are busy and that want a good return on their money. Or sometimes that's a different conversation. Some people want cash flow, but others actually do not want cash flow. So this one, there's some good cash flow, uh, but sometimes it's a matter of parking your money and protecting it against inflation. So you have some appreciation uh, in Alberta. I know it's it's more conservative. I usually use uh, maybe 3% per year uh, to calculate my appreciation. But anyway, you can double your money in five years, depending on what you're doing. Um, so this is just to show a sample deal. And again, it's showing some more numbers. Closing costs are quite low in Alberta, I find, compared to other provinces and um, no land transfer tax, which is amazing. So a huge plus. And um, yeah, sorry, somebody else put the slides. But anyway, it's important that you invest with someone that's not knowledgeable, sorry, and experienced partners to manage the asset. So if you're looking to joint venture, think about who your partner is. And anyway, I have, like I said, properties in several places. So to me, a uh, market is just like another market. You need to get to know the place and see where the opportunities are. So I've also purchased in Calgary a bit earlier, and this is a duplex with some basement, well, unfinished basements. So another fun project, uh, we're adding basement suites and then burrowing the property. And what's fun, like I mentioned earlier, people like to travel. I like to travel and see some real estate. So there's great things to see in Calgary, Edmonton as well. And yeah, there's lots of work to be done. So we started with some flooring and things. Um, but anyway, and finding good teams is important. So little things can make a big difference, like ventilation. So we're fixing up kitchens. We'll have to do the cupboards. But anyway, we started with ventilation. And oftentimes for tenants, it's those little details, like having not, like not too much humidity and really maintaining a, a good place. And this one, the cash flow is much lower, as you'll be able to see, because we're doing a burr. So the burr strategy is awesome, but oftentimes you're taking a lot out of it and you can not leave as much in it for the, the cash flow. So again, it's, it's a matter of what the investors want to achieve. Uh, for me, it's a balanced approach. So I always want some cash flow, some appreciation. Anyway, some rundown of, of my numbers. This one was uh, more costly for renovations. So we put in quite a bit more to add two basement suites and fix the upstairs. Uh, but ARV 870 actually got um, an appraisal for 995. So much more than what was planned initially. Uh, I don't think we're gonna refinance to that level, but anyway, the opportunities are there, uh, which is amazing in my opinion. And um, yeah, so like I said earlier, my presentation, I'm not used to doing long presentations, uh, but I don't know if there's any questions from the audience and I'll, I'll stop my screen share. But if you wanna reach out to me, Wine and Real Estate on Instagram, on, um, on uh, YouTube as well, and 
I'm also the host of a few Facebook groups. So I love connecting with investors and I coach people as well on how to expand beyond beyond your city, beyond your province, your country, your your continent as well. And soon I'll be investing in Mars, maybe. So we'll see. <laughs> or the metaverse sounds great. So yes. So uh, I think I see some questions, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to help you with those. Um, okay, from cash. How did you find GCs there? General contractors? Yes. In in Mandare or Calgary? Mm, she's she's typing. She's typing in Al okay. Alberta in general. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's it's leveraging your power team. So um, my my um, property manager has a whole team. So I yeah I just work with the team. Also other investors. So in Calgary for the the basement conversions or additions, I I did some networking and I met some investors from Ottawa who moved to Calgary. And then we hit it off and they have general contractors or handyman or a plumber and and the list goes on and on. Uh, the other thing as well with the right club um, and mogul, like with this group, anytime you meet, you can speak to other investors and people always know someone that's able to assist you and uh, help you with whatever needs to be done. So I've done the same in Costa Rica. And one thing I, it's good to have property management, but I self-manage even in Costa Rica and in Florida. So yeah, if you're a little daring and you have a good team, uh, I like to self-manage when it's a gated community, which is rare in Canada. Uh, but in Florida, Costa Rica, there's usually guards and fences and things. So it's easy with cameras and the internet. You can watch your property from quite a few thousand kilometers. Uh, but in Canada, it's a little tougher, like there's no gate and stuff. So you got to set up some systems. Valid. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I have a question here from Winnie, which also everyone, Winnie was the winner of our Starbucks Burr definition gift card. So claps for Winnie. Um, how do you find properties under probate? And Yeah, so, um, well... Yeah, that's a good question. So work with a good realtor that will know a listing that's been sitting and it's been problematic. So a lot of listings sit on the market for reasons. Maybe there were oil tanks and some sort of spill. That's not a probate, but I mean, people are scared of touching those properties, but oftentimes it's not much to remediate. And then you get a really cheap property probate, similar thing. If you're patient, like this one was two years in the making, not for me, uh, but you could ask like, what's going on? Why is this on the market for so long? And then I found out it's it's a probate issue. They've had six offers fall through because people gave up after months and months of, of waiting and financing falling apart and things. So yeah, that's, that's an easy, kind of easier strategy. You gotta be, in the right place at the right time as well. Mm, yeah, that's fair. Uh, and yeah, I guess like, yeah, leaning on your leaning on your power team because often they're the ones who have the tips, right? That's um, it. They know, oh, this place, everybody's overlooked it for X reason. It's near uh, something people don't like, or it's remote, like Mandare saying why it's quite remote. Uh, but it's, it's 80 something kilometers from Edmonton. So it's actually, to me, that's not very remote, maybe culturally, it's a bit different, but Ottawa, a lot of people commute into town at least a hundred kilometers because of the price of living. So, and, but now with the price of gas, I hope they don't do it anymore <laughs> But for a while. <laughs> people were doing that. So. Yeah, totally. And, and just elaborating, you said, you know, I think you saw Cash's comment here on it being remote. Uh, how did you find a powder, a power team there? Is it just mostly leaning on folks in Edmonton? Yes. So okay. again, Edmonton, who do you know? And then a referral of a referral. And then I ended up with several choices. I was surprised. So for property management, I thought, okay, Mandare, I mean, I've never even heard of the place. There's going to be <laughs> one choice. And I had eight options, wow. which is more than a lot of places in Ottawa, like some areas yeah. and we're a million people and some parts of town, oh, we don't go there. And Mandera had a choice of eight different companies. So it's quite good, okay. I think. 
sounds like if you're the takeaway there is, you know, just because it's a little bit more remote, you can often lean on contacts, uh, you know, wherever the main hub is nearby. So um, that's it. Alberta example would be like Black Falls. You could you could lean on folks in Red Deer, right? Yeah. Got Absolutely. Okay. And you'll be impressed, like small town community as well. People know each other and uh, refer people. It's it can be quite interesting. OK. And and thoughts on being in a smaller community and, and the risks associated with that. I, I mean, that was Adrian's question. I'm assuming he's also talking about like tenant profile and yeah. you know your tenant pool. Like how many people are out there? Things like that. Yeah, it's shocking. So the property, uh, we just closed on it a few days ago. So uh, there were some vacancies, but the property already came with a waiting list of potential people. So again, some crazy stuff. But the, the why, owner did, why do you think why do you think that is? Uh, people like small town living. So it's surprising. I grew up in a small town about 100 kilometers east of Ottawa. So between Ottawa and Montreal, population 10,000. And people just enjoy the, the peace and quiet. It tends to be an older clientele. So more maybe retirees. And again, that, that can make a really good tenant base as well because they are they take care of the place. They do some gardening and they're quite good. So some people actually do some repairs. Um, yes. I have I actually really enjoy those, those places to invest. Yes, the big city is great. Uh, but mm -hmm. outside can be quite appealing as well. More space and fresh air. And, mm -hmm. and like we've seen with COVID, you're isolating. People want more of that space. So there's an opportunity. Yes, there's some risk. But with that purchase price being so low, uh, the risk I find is mitigated. So this okay. same building in Ottawa would be probably like eight units would probably be at $3 million. So here yeah. we're getting it for 640. <laughs> so <Yeah>. very different <laughs> the perspective. Totally. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. I have my, my resident um, attendee here tonight, who is my father and he has a question. Sure. How do you, how did you find out about properties in Costa Rica? Yeah. Like is it best in class gated communities? Uh, yeah. So again, same same principle. So beautiful Mandare, uh, same thing. I'm I'm in Playas del Coco, and I was super intrigued by Costa Rica. I was looking at new construction opportunities, and I actually put a, an option on a property. But then I started chatting with other investors, and one of my students, like I said, I, I mentor some people. I'm like, oh, I love Costa Rica, but I've never been. I want to buy. I always like to buy where I've never been. I think it's fun. Uh, so anyway, he referred me a realtor from New Newfoundland who moved to Costa Rica eight years ago. And yeah, from Newfoundland of all places, a place yeah. called Fortune, Newfoundland. And she loves La Fortuna, which is Fortune in Spanish in Costa Rica. Anyway, uh, so she showed me around virtually and uh, we visited virtually quite a few properties. And in March, uh, I closed on my first Costa Rica house and I just showed up and we signed and we bought it. And she walked us through, uh, she was quite good. So again, the same power team applies pretty much anywhere. She's like, here's how it works. You purchase it. And if you spend over 150,000, you can become a resident. And here's my power team, accounting and banking and all of that stuff. So it's the same idea. And this person is great for um, spotting like flood zones. So Costa Rica, one big thing is there's a lot of flooding and uh, tsunamis as well. It's possible. So you got to be ready for that. Uh, but yeah, it's short term rentals. I see cash asking. Uh, so yeah, don't do any long term rentals. If anybody thinks Ontario is bad, this is far, far worse. <laughs> you only want to do short term. Uh, less than three months. So some people do furnish kind of longer rentals, but don't go beyond three months. Uh, yeah, you'll be crying. <laughs> and why? And why is that? What's why do you find that? The laws to protect the tenants are even more stringent. So interesting. Yeah, it's not a good idea. And culturally, people like those short term rentals. They're expecting it. And where I buy, it's beach towns. So it's mostly um, either wealthy Costa Ricans that rent 
or Canadians, Americans, and Europeans. But locals actually rent short term more than expats. So it's quite interesting.